Hello, everyone. You're listening to the Light Journal Podcast. I'm Jamie Perez. This is the fourth episode of Leveling Up Your Spirit Walk. Today, I'll be talking about aligning your compass. I'd like to start with the topic of joy. Joy, as I understand it, is in just another word for happiness. Although both words imply a sense of well-being and pleasure, happiness is more fleeting and depends on outward circumstances. Joy is the state of being, a feeling of contentment, connectedness, and purpose. It brings you into the present moment and helps you to expand your mind. It brings meaning to life. It's also incredibly difficult to maintain in the midst of a million responsibilities requiring our time and attention. If you haven't already seen the thumbnail for this podcast, take a moment to look at it. This is a photo I took while walking in the city. I came across a petunia growing in the crack between a stoplight and the bricked pavement. The flower wasn't very big and the leaves were small, but it was flourishing in a very harsh environment. There was minimal soil for its roots and no water since we've been in a drought for the past month. That flower, to me, represents joy. Despite extremely difficult conditions, it's thriving. Yes, the plant is smaller than normal, but it's just as beautiful, if not more so, because of the starkness of its surroundings. That's what joy does. Instead of being defeated by harsh situations and circumstances, it radiates joy, presence, purpose, and connectedness. Seeing that flower gave me a renewed appreciation for joyful resilience in the midst of seemingly impossible odds. Unlike the petunia, humans as a whole focus more energy and effort on what they don't have rather than growing where they are and learning to tap into the resources and energy that are already available. The petunia didn't have enough water, nutrients in the soil, or even a safe place to grow, but it flourished because its energy was focused on growing where it was with what it had. Yes, it was smaller than petunias growing in perfect conditions, but it's every bit as beautiful. And because it is growing in such an unlikely spot, it captures the attention of everyone walking by. It spreads joy just by being there. We humans spend a lot of time following the pack, doing what we're told, adhering to society's norms. It's so ingrained that we don't even realize that's what we're doing. We schedule our days around expectations that have little or nothing to do with what we genuinely enjoy. For example, if I were to ask you, what would bring you joy right now in this moment? Would you even know? Recently, I had begun feeling kind of blah and disconnected from spirit. I didn't know why. I decided to take my dog for a walk around the neighborhood. I live in the country, so I like to use these walks to talk aloud to my spirit team. The mindless repetition of walking helps me to listen and to see spirit more clearly. It was during this walk that I asked Spirit, why am I feeling this way? It took a while to get out of my head so I could hear with my heart, but eventually I got it. They explained that the uncomfortable, blah, disconnected feeling was their way of getting me to pay attention to the energy that was all around me. They wanted me to be aware of awareness. Awareness is consciousness, the underlying truth of our existence. Some may call this awareness God, the universal consciousness, source, spirit, or even the quantum field. It really doesn't matter what we call it. It's both the originator of all consciousness and the sustainer of all consciousness. It constructs, sustains, and maintains everything that we know as reality. This energy is constantly moving, changing forms, and shifting the reality all around us, though we may not be aware of it. Since we are made of that same conscious energy as the awareness itself, we too can and do move, change form, and shift energy around ourselves. 
We do it by the thoughts we think, the choices we make, the things we do, and the intentions we set. I did ask Spirit for more insight into what was troubling me, but I didn't get more information. Over the years, I've learned that if Spirit doesn't give me a complete answer, it's because I need to learn it through experience. Personal experience is always more impactful than simply hearing about something. Because I knew Spirit was going to be giving me more information, I did try to stay aware of awareness as instructed. More often than not, I'm mentally or physically distracted. I imagine that's true for most people. When I'm not distracted by all the stuff I have to do, then it's by all the media stuff that's available. What I didn't realize was how much these distractions were influencing my energetic compass. After I returned home from the walk, I came across an article about a major deforestation project in Papua New Guinea that was being done by several corporations who wanted to grow sugarcane there. Millions of acres of forests and pristine wetlands were being tilled under to fill someone's pockets without regard for the indigenous people living in these areas. I got angry really angry because of the injustice of what was happening and my own feelings of helplessness to stop it. Every day, all day long, we are bombarded by Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and every other kind of news outlets with this kind of ugliness. Marketers know that anger sells, so it seems like everyone is competing for new and unique ways to rile us up. If we're not paying attention, we can drown in it. Most of the time, there's nothing we can do to change what's happening anyway. It just leaves us feeling helpless against the powerful few destroying the planet for all the rest of us. We feel helpless against the unfairness, inequity, and abuse of power. Every day we're exposed to reasons why this planet is doomed and life is hopelessly unjust. This can and does affect our sense of self and our ability to align our internal compass to joy, peace, love, and and other higher vibrational energies. It is so easy to get sucked into this doom and gloom mentality. And when we do, it draws our internal compass away from joy. I can get so focused on everything that's going wrong in the world and on all the awful things people are doing, that it sucks the life right out of me. I start obsessing over everything that's happening, and I get what many would call justifiably angry. But when I do that, I become part of the problem instead of the solution. Energy is magnetic, and it spreads. Whether it's the energy of greed, exploitation, and violence, or the energy of righteous anger, It still adds to the overall chaos. Those corporations and politicians that are selling out the indigenous people and the planet, they're following their compass. They're aligning with the kind of reality they want to live in. And their choices reflect that. That's not a reality I want to aid and abet by letting myself become angry. The best way I can serve is by aligning my compass to love, joy, harmony, and other higher vibrational energies that counterbalance and offset the lower and denser energies. That means I need to be constantly aware of the awareness that permeates all things. When we have a thought or intention, our compass, our magnetic energy, shifts to accommodate it. This energy is magnetic and it draws new possibilities into our reality. So every time we make a choice, that energy adjusts, flows, or shifts directions. These are subtle and minute shifts, but they happen every day, all day long. One of the ways that we can have more control over our compass or our magnetic energy is by experiencing the moment. When we enter into the now, into the moment, our awareness expands to the greater consciousness. The more time we spend in this state of expanded awareness or of being aware of awareness, the more our energetic compass aligns with it. That's where the purest forms of love, joy, peace, harmony, unity, and all those other incredible feelings and thoughts originate. Being in the moment where we can experience unfiltered awareness 
changes our thoughts, intentions, and behaviors. We become something more than what we were. Our reality shifts to become more of what we want the world to be. To put it simply, wherever we focus our gaze, that's where our legs take us. We have a choice. Focus on the worst that society has to offer or focus on the awareness underpinning this reality. I've told the following story before, mostly because of the irony, but also because of the way it illustrates this choice. In the early 1980s, I attended a strict Southern Baptist University that required daily chapel attendance. Different staff would take turns preaching from the pulpit to the students. Their favorite topics, other than the salvation message, were usually involving sexual purity and avoiding temptation. The dean of the college was particularly well known for his warnings about sexual temptation. A year or so after I left the university, that same dean abandoned his wife and family and ran away with his secretary. His constant harping about sexual temptation created an energetic magnetism toward it. His body followed where his attention lay. This is also why there's so many stories about preachers and so-called celibate priests having inappropriate relations with their congregants. The more time and attention they place upon these so-called sins of the flesh, the more magnetic energy they generate toward those things. This is also why well-intended but poorly informed school abstinence programs fail the students. The more attention they bring to something, the more magnetic energy it generates. The more the magnetism, the stronger the pull. This energetic magnetism and the reality it creates doesn't just affect us, but those around us. Consider the examples I gave. The dean's actions didn't just impact him, but his wife and family, the secretary and her family, the college, and all those who knew him. The same is true for all those damaged by the preachers and the priests who have misused their spiritual position to impose themselves upon their congregants. The same is also true for all those students subjected to abstinence programs. Each incident may have impacted hundreds or even thousands of other people. So then what's the answer the Spirit was trying to teach me? We've been so programmed to believe that we have to know every awful thing that is happening in the world at all times and at all places that we fail to recognize the consequences of unifying so much energy one direction. Humanity is flowing, adjusting, and shifting toward chaos, but it doesn't have to be this way. Every person has the power and influence to choose a different reality by becoming aware of the awareness within all things. It is a choice. If we commit ourselves to being in the moment and becoming part of that awareness, then the energy within and around us will shift. Our internal compass will realign us to awareness itself, which is where balance lies. As increasing numbers of us turn away from the chaotic energies, and toward the love, joy, peace, unity, and collaboration that lies within awareness, our combined magnetic energies can and will create a new reality that goes far beyond our own lives and elevates the planet itself. Thanks for listening. I'm Jamie Perez with the Light Journal Podcast. If you would like to learn more about me or the services provided by The Light Journal, be sure to visit my website at thelightjournal.online. Blessings on your journey, everyone.